What now for Al-Qaeda? The sudden violent but not entirely unexpected demise of Al-Qaeda Delhi leader last weekend poses the inevitable questions what become of the organizations he has left behind. In fact, what is Al-Qaeda and it is even relevant anymore in 2022? Al-Qaeda in Arabic means the base. It is prescribed terrorist organization dedicated to attacking Western interests around the world and to bringing down governments across Asia and Africa, which it considered too close to the West and insufficiently Islamic. It was formed in the late 1980s in the Afghan-Pakistani borders land out of the arraignment of the Arab Volunteer Army who went to fight the Soviets who had invaded and occupied Afghanistan. Only a generation ago, Al-Qaeda was pretty much a household name all across the world and it was seen as the number one security threat in the West. Why? Because at the time, it had succeeded in pulling off a series for ever bolder, bolder, ever more complex and successful attacks which in turn inspired more violent followers to join its strength. In 1998, it carried out simultaneously bombing on America's embassies in Kenya and Tanzania, killing mostly African civilians. In 2000, it ramped a tiny speedboard packed with high explosives into the side of the USS Cole in Eden Harbor, killing 17 sailors and crippling the billion-dollar warship then so on a cloudless blue New York morning on 11 September 2001. The world changed forever. After months of secret planning, Al-Qaeda operatives hijacked from U.S. airliners in mid-flight and the street two of them into New York's iconic World Trade Center, bringing down these two giant skyscrapers in a fireball of flames and dust. They crashed another plane into the Pentagon home of the U.S. Department of Defense while in a fourth plane, the passengers overpowered the hijackers and it crashed in a field, killing all on border. Nearly 3,000 people died that day. It became known as 9-11 because in the U.S. calendar system, it took place on the 11th day of the ninth month. It was quite simply the worst terrorist attack ever on mainland America and it set in train two decades of the controversial U.S.-led war on terror. 9-11 was plotted and planned from Al-Qaeda's bases in the mountain of Afghanistan where they were given shelter by the Taliban so the US and British then invaded that country deposed the Taliban and drove all the Al-Qaeda. It took America another 10 years before it tracked down and killed Al-Qaeda's exclusive leader Osama bin Laden in May 2011. So what's happened since then and what state is Al-Qaeda is now? Change at the top and a new arrival, rival Osama bin Laden was swiftly played, replaced at the top of Al-Qaeda by his old mentor, the bookish and best directed Dr. Ayman al-Zawahiri, the man who was killed in a CIA drone strike at the weekend. During his 11 years as leader, this former Egyptian eye surgeon never got anywhere near matching the charismatic appeal enjoyed by his predecessor amongst young, violent-minded jihadists. His recorded videos messages always calling for attacks on the West and its allies tended to be long-winded and boring. He had no mass appeal. Before long, Al-Qaeda was facing desertion to a new ultra-violent splinter group calling itself Islamic State of ISIS, short for Islamic State in Iraq and Sham, Greater Syria. Young jihadists, impatient for a new attack, mocked Al-Qaeda's leadership, saying while it was doing of a lot of talking, ISIS was doing the action. Better in Dell fewer successes, the 9-11 attacks were a mountainous failure of U.S. intelligence. Despite the clues missed by Washington, the attacks succeed partly, partly because the CIA was not sharing its secrets with the FBI and vice versa. That has 
exchange us and western intelligence agencies are now far better informed they collaborate more than and their requirement of informant from inside al-qaeda and isis has mean fewer successful terror attacks safe sanctuary in afghanistan but there's no getting away from the fact that last year's chaotic western withdrawal from afghanistan has opened up dangerous new opportunities for al-qaeda the very fact that al-zawahiri was found living comfortably in a kabul safe house close to the taliban leaderships shows that hardcore jihadist elements within the taliban have no intention of breaking off ties with al-qaeda Afghanistan has special significance for Al-Qaeda. It was here that the young, wealthy and idealistic Osama bin Laden brought his family's engineering skills to build have cave complexes in the 1980s to fight the invading Soviets. It was here that he lived for 5 years under the Taliban's protection from 1996 to 2001. And it is here that Al-Qaeda is keen to re-establish its presence now that its friend and in Taliban are back in power. Africa, the new jihadi battleground where once Al-Qaeda was a geographically small, centralized, tight-knit organization, today it has become a global franchise with pockets of followers dotted around the world, mostly in ungoverned or poorly governed spaces. In Somalia, for example, the Al-Qaeda official affiliate Al-Sawab remains the foremost jihadist group. Africa that has emerged as the new battleground for a jihadist group like Al-Qaeda and ISIS, notably in the area around the Sahel in Northwest Africa. They are not just fighting to bribe to bring down that they see up state governments, they are fighting each other, leaving civilians caught in the crossfire. Middle East Al-Qaeda remains at heart a Middle Eastern terror group. Bin Laden was a Saudi, Al-Zawahiri was Egyptian. The senior leadership such as it remains, it nearly Al-Arab. It retains a significant presence in the Northwest Syria where U.S. drone strikes and a special force forces raid periodically and hits its suspected hideouts. With the death of Al-Zawahiri, Al-Qaeda may now decide to revive its flagging fortunes with a new leader and new strategy. It would be a foolish intelligence agency that includes, concludes that the threat from the, this group has died with its leader.